Now we're going to look beyond the basic shapes and explore what other shapes Tinkercad offers us. Actually, we'll stick on the basic shapes at first because I want to point out a few things here. So if we drag out the cylinder, we've already seen that this shape has properties that you can manipulate. So instead of a rough sided cylinder, we can increase the sides and make it nice and smooth. There are also other options. So we can make a bevel to create a kind of pin with that. And we can segment the bevel so that it makes a nice smooth pin. Drag the cylinder out, or excuse me, the sphere. And we only have one option, and that is to make it a little bit smoother. So there's no way to know necessarily without dragging out a shape to see what options there are for that shape. You just need to drag it out and see. So this one's got top radius, bottom radius, height, and sides. So again, you can make it smoother or rougher. And you can't assume, make any assumptions. So if I drag out the star, for instance, there are none. There are no options. If I drag out the star next to it, you would think well, maybe there are no options. But in fact, there are a bunch of options. I can increase the number of points. I can increase the radius. And the I can decrease or increase the inner radius. So you actually have quite a few options for that shape. And again, there's no way to know without simply dragging the shape out and looking at the options. Here's a tube. Looks like it's got rough sides like the cylinder. Uh, so we would assume that we can smooth that or make it less. But interestingly, as I decrease the sides, it goes all the way down to a triangular tube, then a square tube, then a hexagon or a pentagon, hexagon, and so forth, all the way up to completely smooth circular tube. Radius is what you might expect. Wall thickness, so you can specify a specific wall thickness, say four millimeters. Bevel, as we saw with the cylinder, I can create a chamfer, or if I segment that bevel, then I have a fillet, so I have a nice round shape there. This scribble shape is for odd and very unique, probably has limited use, but if you do need it, it is uniquely suited for certain things. Right away, we can see that it's different. I'm looking at, I have basically a drawing surface and I have a preview screen. Actually, I'm going to close this because I want to drag out another shape. Get rid of the scribble, drag this another new scribble out. And so you can see the cube that I already have on my work plane is there. So as I draw, I get a preview of what that shape looks like and in relation to the shape I already have. So if I draw a cross piece, so this is creating, as you can see, a solid shape. The bottom I have a pencil and an eraser, so I can cut off pieces or add pieces. It's rough drawing shape. And I also have the option to draw shape. This works a little bit differently. This I create a sort of area, or I can also delete an area. And you could combine those tools. And then when you're done, say done. Now, interestingly, maybe not intuitively, those appear to be two sh different shapes, but if I click on either one of them, they're both selected. So if my intent was to create two custom organic shapes, then I would have had to use the scribble tool twice. And if I need to go in and fine tune the scribble at any time, I can click edit scribble and go in and fix it. Let's say done. And I'm back to my scribble. So that can be handy if you have an odd hole that you need to fill, an odd shaped hole, or if you need to connect two pieces, two separate shapes with a little joining piece. When trying to manipulate these set shapes it might be a hassle, but 
if you use this method, then you can create potentially exactly what you're looking for. Now, in addition to these shapes, right, you scroll down and there's more down below, but you'll notice that if you click the arrows, you've got all kinds of categories you can explore. Basic shapes is what we've been working with up until this point. Designs, design starters, lots of shapes here, and then you can either see more shapes by clicking below, or you can click on these subcategories, which has the same effect of see more shapes. So it's a real grab bag of, of what you're going to find in there. Some stuff might be useful. Many of those shapes will not be. Many of them are meant for educational use. Let um, me just jump down to hardware. So if you want to create an easy movable joint, these are nice to know about. So I can drag these out. And so these are, these are already made to precisely fit one another, to snap in. So if I wanted this cube to snap onto a, a sphere and be able to move around, I could just combine. I'm going to move that up a little more. I probably should have put this on the cube instead. So if I combine this shape and combine these shapes, this sphere socket, or receptacle will now receive this cube ball. So it's ball and socket arrangement. So you obviously you could create your own snap fits, but it's really handy to have these already uh, made for you. Another category that I would point out is the shape generators at the bottom. These look fairly straightforward, but they're not. They're anything but straightforward. So for instance, if I drag this shape out, it looks like a cylinder, right? Big deal. But if I click on pr properties, you can see I've got this spline effect going on here. So that if I grab one of these points and pull it out, and I grab another point and pull it in, and pull this out, I can really customize this shape. I can also, in, in addition to grabbing the square center points, I can grab the control points, the circular control points, and drag out to inflate, or drag in to deflate, or I can rotate those points. So between all of these options, you can really create highly customized organic shapes. Right. And even once it's created, you can still do the basic resizing, the height, the width, and the length, and so forth to really get what you're looking for. So that's really handy to know about. Isometric thread. Again, you have lots of options here. Make it big. You can change the pitch and the segments to make it smoother or rougher the number of rotations. The tip scale is the, where the thread ends, right? So you can make that go right in or have a more sharp cut. The segments, and you can let me rotate that around a little bit so you can see. You can smooth that the way the tip comes in. And this is the thread scale. So if I look at it sideways, you can see if it really thin or thick. Now, keep in mind, if you're 3D printing a thread, you're going to have overhang. So if this is too large, then you might need supports, and you may run into other problems. But it can be handy when you need it. Another interesting shape generator is this Varnoi. And if you zoom in closely, you can see it's actually like a crackled pavement type effect. And this is really meant to use as a negative. So if I, let's see, it is 20 by 20, so I'll make it 20 millimeters tall. And I'll go back to basic, drag out a cube, which is by default 20 by 20. 
Oops, before I do that, I'm going to turn that shape generator into a negative, and I will align and group. And you can see what you're doing is essentially creating, it, it may be hard to see in this instance, but it, that pattern has the same dimensions of the red cube, right? You can see the outline on the work plane, but it's been turned into a random sort of webbing type effect. Let's see, I'm going to undo, move that back, because what I can do with this shape is I can alter it in a variety of ways through the properties. So randomizer, you can just keep going until you find a particular effect that you like. You can increase the number of cells, which will also increase the printing time, right? The complexity of the print. You can increase the size of the tile, but I'll undo that. The cell spacing, so it's making, you can see, let me decrease the number of cells again so you can see that more clearly. And I'll look from the top, orthographic view, zoom in. Okay, so now if I look at cell spacing, you can clearly see what's happening. It's making larger gaps there. And I can go with the randomizer again. I'm going to stick with that. So you have lots of options here that you could use. So now I can, whoops, I didn't want to group those. I wanted to select both, align, align, now group. And so I have this kind of crazy shape here. Um, this looks better. This kind of effect can look really cool if you have an organic shape. So say something you sculpted in Forger 3D, if you bring it in and then you use the Voronoi to make it so that your model has the same general shape, but it's filled with this kind of random webbing. So again, the ultimate point to remember is that um, there are lots of different shapes to explore and that each shape will have its own unique set of properties that can be adjusted. I guess one last thing that I'll mention is that if I click on shapes, you can see at the top it says your creations. Well, before we do that, favorites. So if I click my favorites, these are shapes that I use frequently. So I've favorited them. And how you can do that is when you hover over any shape, you'll see that there's an outline of a star in the upper right-hand corner. If you click that, it then gets added to your favorites. So I've added the cone. If I go to favorites, there's the cone and I can unfavorite it. I no longer want that to be in my favorites. And your creations, so these are models that I've created in Tinkercad, and then you can add them to the shapes so that whenever you need them, if there's a shape that you use over and over again, like I have this uh, 3D Printing Club logo that I put on different things so I can just drag it out and add it to another shape or manipulate it or whatnot. And so how you add a shape, a new shape to a new model to your creations is, so let's say this, this cube joint that I created earlier, I can click on it and choose create shape. And there it is. And you can add a description, some tags, and you could also lock the size. So if it's something that you know that you're only going to use at a specific dimensions for, then you can lock it in place. Otherwise, if you don't click that, then you'll be able to resize this. So I say save shape. And you see it's now added to my creations. And so whenever I'm working on another model, I can just drag it out. I don't have to recreate it or I don't have to go into a previous design in Tinkercad and copy it and then come over here and paste it in. That can be really handy to know about. I'm going to click that and delete because it's not something that I want to add to my creations. So do some exploring. Just take time and go through and see what's what. There are, like I say, there are a lot of things in here that won't necessarily be helpful to you, but you never know what you're going to find. So for instance, I just randomly clicked on structures and scenery, and it turns out that there is one design in here, this brick wall. 
which can be really handy. Get rid of that. So if you're looking to add texture to a print, you can use the brick wall to do that. Or if you're creating a model architecture, say for a, for a model train set, or if you're making an architectural model for an actual building, it can be really handy. You don't have to create your own brick texture. It's right there. So that's something you might want to add to favorites. You'll be able to find it easily. You won't have to remember where in here, where in all these menus it was hiding. So if nothing else, you might want to go through exhaustively all the different shapes and click the yellow star for the ones that you think you might be interested in using later. That way, when you want to find them again, all you have to do is click on favorites and you don't have to try to go through the menus and the submenus of all the different shapes.